Hey guys, welcome back to another Big Rook Games tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing our Call of Duty Zombies series where we show you how to make all of the assets in Call of Duty Zombies and provide all of them to you for free. And today we'll be showing you how to make the mystery box. So here I have the finished product of what we'll be building today and I'll show you what that looks like when we animate it. So here we have our box which I made completely out of primitive cubes and when we open the box it will randomize through the weapons that you put into the script and select one and drop back down and the box will close again. So I'm going to start from scratch, show you how to build everything and we will provide all of the assets for you in a Unity package with the link down below. If you missed this last time we showed you how to build the spawn points with the animated boards as you can see in our scene right here. So if you want to check that out I'll put a link up on the screen. So I'm going to open a new scene and we can start the mystery box from scratch. So here I have my new scene. The first thing I'm going to do is build a box real quick. I'll fly through it probably fast forward, but I'm just going to take cubes and build an outline of the box so we have something to work with. So now we have our box. It doesn't have to line up perfect. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a material on it. So in my materials folder, I'm going to create material and name it box material and select the picture that is included in the download or whatever picture you want and apply it to all six sides by dragging the material into the scene. Next, we'll create an animation to open and close the lid when we access the box. First, I am going to create an empty object so we can put everything into one game object. I'll name it Mystery Box. Select all of your assets and put them under Mystery Box. And I'm going to name the lid, lid, so we know which one that is. And then the rest of them will be box. And next we'll add animation to the lid. So I'm going to add component and add an animator. For this we'll need a controller, so I'm going to go into my assets folder and create animator controller. I'll name this mystery box controller. And we need to add this to the animator on our lid. So I'm going to click on lid and drag mystery box controller into the controller field. Now we have a controller and we can add animations in the animator. If you don't have the window up, go to window and you can find animator. And first we want to create a state for the lid opening. So I'm going to click on our lid asset, click add curve in the animation window, and I'm going to save as open lid. So this will create an empty animation and we want the lid to open so we can go back to our scene. And in our animation window, you can see the record button is red. So any changes we make in the scene will be recorded in to the animation window. And it makes things very easy to animate objects like this. We want to add curve and we can put the transform into the curve. And the only thing we are going to be changing is the position and rotation. So let's add both of those position, add curve, transform, rotation we can bring up the rotation tool and rotate it about 85 degrees. We want it to be almost completely open. So I'm going to go over here and click 85 and then I'm going to move it to where it would be at the hinge. If you hold down shift it will just move in the two axis that you're looking into and put it to where it looks like it's attached still. And if we hit the play button in the animation window it will play our animation. And that's a little fast, so I'm going to move this down. So now we have the box open. And for the close, we're going to create another animation, so we can call it separately. But it will be the same thing in reverse. So I can just copy this, change the speed to negative one, and it will do the exact same thing in reverse to close the lid. So to create that new state, I want to go to my animation window, click on the open lid, and you'll find create new clip. And this is going to be called close lid. And so we have an empty animation again. I'm going to go to the open lid and you can copy and paste the keyframes by command C or control C. 
and go back to close lid and paste. We have the same animation here, but we want the speed to be negative one so it moves in the opposite direction. And we have the two animations. So now that we have an opening box, I'm going to add a cube to reference our positions for the guns to come up. When we have our guns coming out of the box, we'll just reference the position of the cube that we'll animate and set the gun position to that cube so all the guns will be moving in the same direction and the same position. So I'm going to create a new cube and we're going to name this cube position. I'm going to nest that inside of the mystery box. For now it will be rendered just so we have a reference but I will shrink that and inside the box you can see it and we want to animate this now kind of like we did the lid but this time I'm going to use a straight animation instead of an animator controller so you guys see the two different ways that you can animate an object it's still really easy we'll go to the add component and search for anim again and this time select animation instead of animator and here we can build a single animation without referencing it in a controller and this can be easier than using a controller if you're just having one state and you don't really need to transition in between states so if you open the animation window which we have open and select the position box we can add curve and I'm going to name this gun movement so the same as before we want to add the curve this time we're just going to be changing the position so you can add position. Here we just want to move the gun straight up, hold it there for a couple seconds, and then drop down slow. So at two seconds, I'm going to lift it to the maximum height it will go. And at five seconds, I'm going to keyframe that by clicking the add keyframe. So it stays in that position from two seconds to five seconds. And then I'll go to nine seconds and return the object down into the box and that's it if you play it you'll see it comes up stops and drops back down into the box and now we want to put this gun movement animation onto the position box so if you click on position in your hierarchy you will see the animation component and you want to drag the gun movement onto the animation field so now it has that animation and click on play automatically to deselect that box so it does not play when you start your scene. So now we have both of our animations that we need. Now we're going to add a script to tell it when to open the box and when to start the animation for the gun movement. Click on mystery box in the hierarchy and add component and find script. I'm going to use a C sharp script and name it mystery box. Double click it to open. So the first thing we'll do is reference both of our animations, the open and close lid and the gun movement. And these are two different types of references. So on the lid animations, we'll reference that with an animator and call it controller. And on the gun movement, that is an animation movement. In the start function, we'll want to set these up by referencing these in our mystery box. So controller equals get component. And you can see here it's not auto-completing. You can easily fix that by going into Unity, clicking assets, and sync mono develop project. And because this is returning an array, I am going to set it to the first object in the array because we know it is the only one in our components. For the movement animation, we'll do the same thing. And this time it's an animation. And we will need to reference the first item in that array. So now I'll create three new functions that we can reference to when we want to open the lid, close the lid, and run the gun animation. Open lid, close lid. And run gun movement and when we have an animation controller it is very easy to play the animations in there we have our reference already set up so we can access the animations directly here controller dot play and our animation is called open lid and that's all we need to do so we can do the same thing for close lid and the gun movement, since we didn't use a controller, 
and we just use a single animation, we can just type movement.play and we don't have to type the name of the animation. And now I'm going to create a function called open mystery box. When we open the box, we want the lid to open, so I'm going to call open lid. And I want the gun position animation to run at the same time, so I will call that function run gun movement. And I'm going to go back to the top and declare a new variable, a public bool, so we can open the box while the scene is running. And in the update function, I'm going to write an if statement, if open box, then I want the mystery box to open. So if you save it and go back to the scene and hit play, you'll see the lid opening over and over. And that is because the lid open is set as our default state. So go back to your mystery box controller and create state empty and set this as default. Now if you hit play, nothing animates. So now we need that transition between open lid and close lid. So I am going to make a transition to close lid. And this way we won't even have to call the close lid because we can set it to trigger at a certain time after open lid has finished. Click on the transition arrow. And in the conditions, we have exit time. Change that to nine seconds. You can see this expands the timeline and we can go over to nine seconds and you can see open lid is repeating and that's because in our open lid animation it is set to loop so if you click on open lid in the project folder and unselect loop time and go back to the transition it will only have it once there and do the same for close lid and if you go back to that transition arrow now we have the time in between open and close set and if we hit play on the preview. You can see it opening and then closing. And this way we don't have to call the close lid in our scripting even though I set up a function to do so. We don't have to do that. The reason why we want the close lid function to be there is because eventually we will be taking the weapon out of the box and we want it to close immediately so we will cancel our open lid to close lid transition and just close the lid directly. So now if we play our scene and go to the mystery box in your hierarchy and click on the open box checkbox, we will see it open and the guns will move up while they're randomized and they'll move down slowly and the box will close. So timing looks pretty good there. And I'm gonna go back into the script. So now I'm going to add a few things to the update statement so that we have a state machine for our mystery box so that we can tell it what to do when the box is opening, when it's open, when it's closing, and when it's closed. And after the if open box, I am going to put else if, which means it will look at if open box and if the condition in the if statement is not true, it will go down to the else if statement. And the way we will tell if the box is still going is I'm going to check the animation on the movement. So I'm going to check movement.isPlaying, which will check if the animation is playing, and it takes a string gun movement is our animation name, and that returns true if the animation is currently playing, so we know that the box is open if that animation is still playing. And finally, I'm going to add an else statement, which will run if none of the above statements were executed. And then in open box, I'm going to set our open box spool to false, so it only runs one time. So next, we want to start adding guns into the mystery box so it can cycle through randomly. And I'm going to add an array of game objects, public game objects, and this will be an array. So add brackets and we will call that guns. And we have it public so we can just drag and drop our guns that we want to throw into the mystery box directly from our scene into the script. And let's go back to the scene and import some of the guns that were provided in the download. So now I'm going to import the guns 
and I have three that were in the file. You can use any guns you want and you can drag and drop them right into the scene and we want them all to be in the same position and facing the same direction and we want to put it right above the box so we know what it looks like coming out of the box. So I'm going to move it over to the box right where it would be when it comes out and obviously that looks a little big so I'm going to shrink it down until it looks good coming out of the box. It's probably about right. And next I'm going to add the next gun and an easy way to move this to the position that we want it is double click on the gun that we already have there and then select the other gun and go up to game object and move to view and this will move it to the exact same spot and we want to do the same thing with this one and actually it lines up pretty good with the other gun so I'm just going to leave it the same size and then for the third gun we're going to do the same thing you can see this one is much bigger so we're going to shrink that down and rotate it to the correct size and the best way to line up the sizes is to look at the gun handle because they should all be about the same for each gun so now that we have our guns all the same size I'm going to go into the mystery box in our hierarchy and you can see we have a public field in the mystery box script if you open that guns field we have the size of zero but we can drag and drop them right into that script from the hierarchy if you drag it over the guns field so we have the UMP, the Glock and the modified Glock so now we have all three guns in our script and now I'm going to go back into the script so we can randomize which gun it selects <laughs>